now it's the first annual Howard Stern Show Awards, the Sphincties. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Robin Quivers. I'm here in our studios in Secaucus for the first annual Sphincty Awards. You can feel the tension in the air as people file in. Let's go to Mark Harris, who's outside greeting our celebrity guests as they arrive. Isn't this exciting? I mean, here they come right now. They're driving up. Who's going to be first? I mean, this is better than the Oscars. You must have been the most beautiful contestant. Oh, thank you. Well, I never thought it would happen to me. Uh, are those implants? No. You'll never be anorexic. I'm very excited about it. I think it'll be one of the best shows ever. Well, what are you going to do if you win the award tonight? Oh, I'm going to be partying all night long. This is the first time you've ever been up for an award. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. yes, it is. Veronica Rudolph, Mark Harris, welcome. Uh, Could I just give you a kiss for luck? Uh, just a handshake. Well, give me a paw. A hand. You have been enjoying yourself. Oh, yeah, I've been enjoying myself very, very, very much. But tell me, you are hoping to get the award. Oh, well, sure. Are you a lesbian? Yes, I am. But you remember the kids. Oh, definitely. It's great, great to be here. Now, tell me, <laughs> you got, you got two. You're so kooky. <laughs> I uh, I enjoy Chicago. Uh, Jerry, this is the Howard Stern show. I know it is. And you're here. Who are you? I'm afraid. <laughs> what do you say to people that claim that you're homophobic? To claim that I'm homophobic? What does homophobic mean? Against homosexuals. Well, you would know more about that than me. <laughs> no, and I won't even... Come on, I, come on, I know all about you. Oh, again, he knows about me. I know again, all about okay. you. Tonight, morons, freaks, and third-rate celebrities compete for valuable awards. Also, special appearances by Bon Jovi, Andrew Dice Clay, and Stallone. Plus more breath, lesbians, bikinis, and total nudity than you've ever seen on one show. Stay tuned for the first annual Shrink D Awards! And now, from the crummiest TV studios in the entire world, it's the first annual Sphincty Awards. And here's your host, Howard Stern. <laughs> Hello, my dear. <laughs> Tonight's show is being viewed in 75 countries, 197 cities, 11 million homes, and a gay bar on Christopher Street. As a matter of fact, because we're being viewed all around the world, we received many telegrams from celebrities. Now, some of the celebrities couldn't be with us, so they sent their regrets. Now, here, take a look at this one. Dear Howard, all the best on the award show. Schwinkies forever. Love that KKK guy, signed George Bush. Yeah! All right. Hey, this is exciting, isn't it? Dear Howard, all the best. Who's the chick with the double D's? Signed, Bill Clinton. Whoa! I love it. Dear Howard, I wish I could be with you, but lesbians are pinning me to the floor as I write this. Signed, Leona Helmsley. I can't believe it. I tell you, it's a great night. Now, by the way, none of those telegrams are real. In fact, they're as fake as Gary's teeth. Where is Gary, everybody? Look at those teeth. Aren't they great, everyone? Ladies and gentlemen, I am now proud to introduce the president of the Howard Stern Spinkty Awards Academy, Mr. Gene Rayburn. And good evening to all of you gathered here on this historic occasion. Now, this is the Spinkty. It's a beautiful tin statue on a Brazilian mahogany base. See that? That's real Brazilian mahogany. Let's take a closer look at this coveted award. The Sphincter is manufactured in Pennsylvania by a lesbian Amish woman. <laughs> it's 15 inches tall, weighs approximately 5 pounds. So what makes this statue so sought after? Everybody wants it. I'll tell you what it is. 
It's the crisp new $10 bill held firmly in its butt cheeks. <laughs> but not firmly enough. There it is. The naked sphincty. Long may it proudly bend over. Yeah. And now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, Miss Robin Quivers. Yeah. Hello, darling. Hello, dear. Good evening. Howard, what are you doing? You're supposed to be over here. Oh, really? <laughs> shirking your duties as a hey, I'm, I'm covered with blood. You know Billy Crystal. I know, I know, it's terrible. Gene, what's wrong with you doing this show? What's the matter with you? All right, our first award is for the most outstanding participant in a game show. We've had a lot of fun doing our versions of game shows. A lot of fun? What are you, on acid, Robin? It's been absolutely no fun. It's been a mess. All right, the nominees are... Daniel Carver, the Ku Klux Klan guy, for his racist statements during homeless Hollywood squares. Well, Who's right worse, the Jews or the blacks? The Jews are worse. Better. The Jews are worse than the blacks. Right. Are the Mexicans lower than everyone? No. The, <laughs> the, the niggers are worse than the Mexicans. Also during Homeless Hollywood Squares, the homeless woman, Magdalia de Jesus, for her difficulty with the rules of tic-tac-toe. Go ahead. <laughs> Ladies, who would you like? You got a whole bunch of squares. Come on, let's get into the squares. Come on. J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan. <laughs> and Sandy Korn in the couldn't get into the college bowl for failing to answer the simplest question. Where do diamonds come from? Um. Diamonds come from, like, rocks. From Trump. <laughs> <laughs> and the sphincter goes to... Wow, this is exciting, Robin. Our first award, Howard. I knew it. It's the Ku Klux Klan guy, KKK guy. He wants to say thing. Accepting Daniel Carver. Daniel, come on up and get your award. <laughs> Where's the sphincter? Where's the sphincter? Where's the women? <laughs> yeah, who's uh, supposed to be uh, Oh, here it up? is. Here it is. Here's your award. I thought women give it to you. If you want to make a speech, uh, go make ahead. Accept the speech. Accept the speech. <laughs> I'd like to thank all the people in Georgia, all over the nation, who wrote in letters to the Howard Stern Show wanting more of the KKK. I'm on his radio shows, his television shows. I've been on all the TV shows. Uh, <clears throat> I want to thank all members of the Ku Klux Klan. And I want to tell all white people that the niggers in this country are organizing. They're stockpiling guns. They're going to kill off all the white men. They're going to rape our women and make slaves out of our children while you sit on your butt, drink beer, and watch TV. The niggers are going to take over. The Jews are using the nigger as a tool, just like a carpenter uses a hammer. <clears throat> the Jews, the Bible says in John, that Jews are of their father, the devil. And the Jews are destroying this country using the nigger as a tool. I want all white people to join the Ku Klux Klan. Organize groups in your schools, in your neighborhoods. <clears throat> this nigger in Milwaukee, Alderman McGee, he said by 1995 he'll have the Black Panther Party on top of tall buildings shooting anybody that's not black. Well, thank you. Are you done with your speech? All right, this is Daniel Carver winning the... Uh... Some Spinkies were awarded prior to tonight's telecast. Most talented spokesmodel went to Wendy Lewis for eating a lobster, fighting right through the shell. I'm here with our beautiful spokesmodel, Maria. Look at Maria, beautiful 34 Ds. Are those natural or breast implants? Natural. Natural 34 Ds for Maria. Maria, you're the Snapple girl tonight. You just hold the bottles, and you, uh, you can dance around with them sexy. There's nothing more refreshing than Snapple iced tea. Yes, it's delicious and refreshing, 100% pure tea, no extracts, no concentrates. It's steeped the old-fashioned way. I want you to pour a glass of Snapple and taste it. It's so delicious, it's 100% natural. There's original with lemon diet with 100% NutraSweet, unsweetened with lemon, raspberry, orange, mint, and cranberry. Ah!
Mmm. Isn't that good? Delicious. Scrump diddly -icious. Yes, get Snapple's iced teas made from the best stuff on earth. It's Snapple. We're back, and now the man whose ass hangs like a worn couch, Howard Stern. Ah, uh, come on. What's the matter with you? I'm the big host here. What's the matter with you? All right, the next category is the most... Hey, by the way, Robin, do you think it's amazing Jerry Vale is here and he didn't sing one friggin' note? You, not one note. What is this? What kind of thing is that? All right, here we go. The next category... I thought Jerry would have walked out by now. He's hanging in there with us. I love him. I <laughs> He's really enjoying do. this. He really is enjoying it. it. Hey, Frank Stallone, get your hand off Jerry Vale's arm. What's the matter with you? I think he's got it in his lap. The next category is the most humiliating... <laughs> the next category is the most humiliating use of a staff member other than Dan Foreman, our producer. Why is humiliating people such a big part of your humor, Howard? Is it that deep-set emotional need to put down others to make yourself feel bigger? Keep reading. I'm not done? No. Or do you feel humiliation is the key to the funniest and most biting comedy? I mean, what are you, nuts? <laughs> I drifted off during your speech. <laughs> so did say, I. I'm asleep. <laughs> All right, let's go to the nominees. Here they are. Talent coordinator Ellen Linder being forced into a lesbian situation with a spokesmodel. Yeah. Ellen, hard. you work hard. on the show. Now, what are you doing in act? Show me what you guys do. That's okay. That's really okay. <laughs> that's okay. All right, Ellen. Okay. <laughs> Comedy writer Mark Burglass being smacked in the head by jello and oatmeal and chocolate pudding during the Howard Stern well, roast. I just want to thank Howard for giving me uh, a job as a writer. <laughs> Uh, the anyway, Howard, before I started working on this show... <laughs> Segment producer Gary Delabate caught picking his nose on camera. <laughs> a man who is shopping for lunch on my time. Head writer Jackie Martling and producer Gary Delabate frolicking in bed for no apparent reason. <laughs> oh, man. Kiss him. Kiss him on the lips. Kiss him on the lips. The lips. The lips. The lips. The lips. <laughs> All right, let's see who the winner is. The shrinky goes to... Mark Berglis. Yeah! Mark Berglis accepting. Congratulations, Mark. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I don't have that much to say, except I'd like to uh, thank Howard for giving me uh, my big break on his show, writing for him. And uh, I'd like to dedicate this award to my brother, who was the first person to uh, use me as a food target. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Mark Berglitz, everyone. All right. He's really not going to get hit with anything? All right, and the next category is for our producer, Dan Foreman's best... Oh. Nothing more to say. You knew it was going to happen, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, all right, there you go. And the next category is for our producer, Dan Foreman's best appearance. This is Dan competing against himself, so it makes it pretty easy to predict who the winner is. Robin, when Dan Foreman's on the screen, everybody's a winner. Yeah. All right, the nominees are Dan Foreman for appearing as the baby Jesus in our Christmas special. <laughs> this isn't our savior, that's, that's Dan! You guys, I made a messy. Dan Foreman for appearing as Dan B. the Genie in Pee Wee's Play With Yourself House. Uh -oh. 
Makalaka hi, Makahiney ho. Makalaka hi, Makahiney ho to you too, Dandy. Dan Foreman dressed as a pilgrim and chasing Gary the turkey at the first house party. <laughs> go ahead, run. Dan, you chase him. There you go. It's good. <laughs> And Dan Foreman dressing as a Viking and scaring children at Halloween. What's going on out here? <laughs> What's everybody so afraid of? <laughs> and the schminky goes to... Who? <laughs> Dan Foreman as the baby Jesus. Dan as the baby Jesus. Dan Foreman accepted. Congratulations, Dan. Congratulations, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Speech. <All right. laughs> this is a very special award. I want to thank the Academy, my wife and two sons, and my mom. <laughs> Unless you've had the good taste to change the channel, the first annual Sphincty Awards will be back with Jerry Vale and Boobs, Boobs, Boobs. Isn't it exciting tonight? Uh, here's our spokesmodel, Maria. Yeah. Very beautiful. You just pose a lot, and I'll talk about dial a mattress. Okay. All right, you just do your best poses. Dial a mattress is the easiest and least expensive way to buy a new bed. Now, I've used dial a mattress twice. It's pose like the Schwinkti. You see this? Here. This is the Schwinkti Award. Got to bend over like this. You know why the Schwinkti's bent over like this? Why? So he can see your breasts. <laughs> see? There you go. All right. Uh, you keep posing. Come on. Now, dial a mattress is the, great, the greatest. It really is. I've used it twice. I really enjoy dial a mattress. They are top name brands, Serta, Sealy, Simmons, at low warehouse prices. Express two-hour delivery. You name the day. Whoa. What? Hey, am I getting my leg rubbed or what? Express two-hour delivery. You name the day and time, seven days a week, 6 a.m. to midnight. You're the boss. Just call 1-800-M-A-T-T-R-E-S. A trained betting consultant will help you make the right choice. Yes, when the truck arrives, you look over the bed. If you like it, you pay. If you don't, send it back with the driver. Call 1-800-M-A-T-T-R-E-S. Leave off the last S for savings. Welcome back to the first annual Sphincty Awards. Once again, television genius, Howard Stern. Wow. Wow, thank you. Yeah, I know. I wrote that. I wrote all this. Now, I got to say something. The next category is the best topless appearance. Now, this is my favorite category. Why is that? Because if there's one thing I love, it's uh, a bare set of <laughs> Robin. Now, the nominees are Veronica Rudolph, 38 Double D, for stripping off her top at the Spokesmodel of the Year pageant. What? Devin, 34C, for showing her breast in an audition for the swimsuit show. Look at this. Here it comes, right off. You don't even care. Where's the woman from the National Organization for Women? <laughs> I wow. hope she's safe in her home. Now, those are not breast implants? You're going to show me a trick? trick then. All right, here's a trick. Wow. What was that? Cheryl Baker, 36C cup, for losing her bikini in a hot tub with me during a commercial. And then you got up, and whoa. Oh, I can show you. Whoa, the whole, thing, the whole thing just came down. Lisa Weapon, 66 Double H, for getting nude after Howard Stern's People's Court segment. Wow, we. Oh, 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 oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. And Al Rosenberg, 52C, for receiving a breast examination in the Breast Tribute Show. A little aggressive, Howard. Sometimes it helps me to feel them. Look at those. Ooh. And the Sphinxy goes to... Here it goes, Robin. Who do you think is going to win? I don't know. Veronica Rudolph for stripping during the Spokesmodel of the Year pageant. Oh. Veronica Rudolph accepting. Wow. Come on up. Oh, no, what happened to you? Wait a second, you put on weight. What's going on? Wait a second, what happened to you? What happened to you? Did you get pregnant? It must have been the week that I won the show. You got knocked up. You were supposed to notify the pageant. That's right. I tried to get a hold of you. Shouldn't you be disqualified? 
<laughs> Does this mean you won't be taking your top off on tonight's show? No, I'm not going to take it off. You won't even pull it down? No. Oh, oh, we were down counting down. on you. Oh, oh, you we were counting on you. I don't believe oh, it. You didn't see why do you me? think you why, won? Why don't we want to see those? <laughs> why don't we want to see those? Because they're getting so big. They're getting so big? Oh, oh, that doesn't mean bad, right, Howard? <laughs> but why don't you accept your award? Go ahead. All right, well, uh, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> all right, first of all, i got to thank my husband for not killing me for taking off my top. <laughs> and then I have to thank my in-laws for not killing me <laughs> and understanding that they did offer me $500. So, anyway. No, I can't. Take it off. No, I can't take it off. No. <laughs> Watch the show. No, no, no. Whatever you never do it. Do it now. No, 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 no. More money. You offer me money. Charge the press. Well, if, if the show gives you another five hundred dollars, you would take off your top again. You could have got it for a hundred. <laughs> we could get the money together. Oh, no. Well, uh, do you think that uh, it's worth five hundred? Can I get authority from the show? Did we get five hundred dollars from the show? A thousand, a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars. Can I hold the shrink for you? What? Hey, guess what? Your kid is going to go to college. Hold on. Turn him around. Turn him around. Turn around. A thousand bucks. Right? A thousand Can you take off your jacket? All right. Yeah. In front of the podium. <laughs> they are bigger. Ready? Go ahead. Ready? Yes. Okay. Here we go. A thousand bucks. Whoa! A thousand bucks. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. Yes. Oh, that's very exciting. There's something so wrong. Congratulations. I think that may be a first. That's the first time a pregnant woman has taken off her top, Robin. You know, the Schwinkies are so great because something always exciting happens yes, on the show. Yes, you Schwinkies. never know what's going to happen on this show. And Robin, now a very controversial award. Really? This is the award for the most racist segment. That's right. It's a tough choice, Robin. What? Deciding who the winner is? No. To do this award or run the boobs again. Anybody want to see that again? Another thousand dollars? Forget it. The nominees for the most racist segment are Ted the Janitor. Ted wears a plate in his lip as a jungle native thanking Bob Geldorf for live aid to Africa. I appreciate most food. Yes. Food's good. Ted, can you speak in your regular voice? <laughs> Fred the Elephant Boy for his portrayal of the superhero Korean Man in the sketch Fart Man Meets I Adam West. I don't know the y'all. I fought for all Koreans everywhere. Doug the Dwarf as Dart Man, the criminal who terrorized New York uh, women by shooting darts in their behind. Are these racial attacks? Are you against these? I never met a girl named Rachel in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking. And the Schwinky goes to... Who is it? Who is it? Robin, you read it. Ted the Janitor for his portrayal of a wild native. Ladies and gentlemen, I have sad news. Ted cannot make it tonight. He is home recovering from a heart attack, but he did send us the following message in case he won. Uh, I really appreciate this Swinky Award from our FI win. And I've had a very good time on the shores and I would like to come back and do a lot more of the shores because when I do it, I have enhanced the enjoyment of my life towards the show and I really do care an awful lot about Howard and the whole staff that it's just phenomenal to believe that he gives me a break when I was working in that building and uh, he came up and I used to do good for him, he'd do good for me. Anybody want to translate what Ted just said? The uh, hell was that? Ladies and gentlemen, Robin, I know you're excited about this. Yes, this I, is a... I can tell by your top how excited you are. Big star. Beautiful dress. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the legendary Jerry Vale. Yeah.
Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce to the accountants who have painstakingly tabulated the ballots and diligently worked behind the scenes. The accounting firm of Haskins and Cleaver has been representing shows like this for 65 years. Now, please welcome the chairman of the board and the chief controller of our accounting firm, Mr. Herman R. Simeon and Mr. Resus K. Chimpman. On the Howard Stern Show, we never hide behind our faults, behind good makeup, lighting, or costumes, because we simply can't afford them. So the nominees for the most embarrassing body part on a cast member are Howard Stomach for appearing with Anissa the Spanker when she beat him into submission. Look at Howard, the little baby, the little pudgy little baby. That's stupid. We'll give him a pacifier, how about that? Oh, please. Say, Howard, you're a pudgy little baby. Howard, you're a pudgy little baby. <laughs> Jackie's belly button as it was examined by Howard for bulging blue veins. <laughs> oh, it's like, you know what I think it is? I think, like, the umbilical cord was not cut properly. Ralph Cirillo, the makeup man, whose misshapen front tooth looks like Snagglepuss. Look at that tooth. Where did that, who does that belong to? Mike Tyson. And producer Gary Delabate's giant green teeth for fitting into a horse's mouth. There he is. Look at that. Oh, look at those. Whoa, oh, look at that. Boom. Gary, you pulled up again. <laughs> Howard's flabby butt when he danced to his own version of I'm Too Sexy on Club Howie. I'm too sexy for my butt cheek. I'm too sexy for my butt cheek. And the schwinkty goes to Howard's butt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, girls. Thank you, girls. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm so excited. You know, I knew my buttocks would win. And to thank everybody tonight, oh, no. I would like to have my buttocks say a few words. Here it is. Wait a second. There you go. That's... Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. It's really great to be here tonight. Awarded earlier, best use of a person with an affliction went to Kenneth Keith Callenbach, who accepted his sphincter with another original performance. I'm here with the beautiful Marie again, our spokesmodel tonight, and look how beautiful. You just pose during the commercial. There you go. If you're looking for a used car, you must consider New Jersey Public Auto Auction. Now, it is a wild scene. Have you ever been to an auto auction? It's unbelievable. Mad Mike, the auctioneer, is auctioning off every car to the highest bidder. Don't worry if you've never been to any auction. They have guys there who will help you. And you know what? They guide you through the auction. And they pay. You know what I like about the auction? You pay only what you want to pay, not a penny more. In fact, Maria here will get nude in your car. That's why she's here. Come to New Jersey Public Auto Auction this Wednesday evening or Saturday morning. Inspect the 500 cars, the vans, the pickups, and then bid, just like a dealer buying wholesale. You're going to get some deal at New Jersey Public Auto Auction. Why don't you call this number, get more information, 201-817-9500. Or come to 75 Stockton Street in Newark, right near the airport. New Jersey Public Auto Auction. One for Let's return to the first annual Think the Awards with the most extraordinary social commentator of our times, Howard Stern. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Robin, our next Finky is uh, an exciting category. This is for best original choreography. Mmm, that's good. It proves that our show 
isn't just about skin and big boobs. You're right, Robin. Our show is not just about bare skin and big boobs. Occasionally, we sneak in a nice crotch shot, too. Uh. All right. The nominees are... The Underdog Dance, an interpretive piece about a superhero underdog. Susan Muldowney, choreographer. up my children. <laughs> the shower dance performed during a live commercial by Tempest, choreographer. <laughs> dance during the Ted Kennedy sketch, Howard Stern, choreographer. Have a shake, 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 shake your pee face. Have a shake it up and down. Shake, 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 shake your pee Tilt down. And the schminky goes to... All right, Robin, here we go. You read it. Who do you... Well, here we go. The underdog dance, Susan Muldowney. I thank you for calling me up here, but I'm afraid I have some very unpleasant news. I cannot accept this award. Oh. Oh. I'll, I'll tell you why if you just keep quiet and listen. When I was, the events leading up to this presentation have been nothing but disaster. I, I'll tell you what, when I was first asked to be on this program, I had no previous knowledge of it. I had some qualms when I was told that it was going to be a comedy show because I am dead serious uh, about my performing in general, not so much this particular characterization. So when I came to the studio, I was profoundly shocked by, what way, by the norms of this program, the rude exploitations of every guest. Howard's challenging them into battles of wits and, co and, and confrontations for rudeness's sake. The obscene language, we have far much for far too much of that in the world. Panelists and questions exemplifying the worst of human vices, the skimpily dressed women assistants, such as these two, commercials for erotic code 900 phone lines, and the worst of all, the incessant use of sexuality and sexual explicitness, improvising or borrowing anything for the sake of vulgarity and profanity. That is just, just downright evil. Why was this all done? For humor, amusement, big ratings, the only justifiable ratings for a program like this are R and X. Well, among strangers, I have been the target of street mockery, smear campaigns, <laughs> lewd proposals, and repetitions of obscene questions originally asked by either Howard or an assistant. And among children, no more than 12 years old. Since the Underdog cartoon show has not been rerun in a number of years, these impressionable children, 12 and under, were hearing about Underdog for the first time. But due to Howard's antics, his assistants, and other guests constituting what he himself turned a sea of debauchery around me, these impressionable youngsters were hearing words like Ku Klux Klan, homosexuality, orgasm, lesbianism, making out for the first time. What kind of example is that to set for impressionable youngsters? And as a result, you had, you had better think very, you, think, you better think hard about that. Because now, now it's been a rep, irre, irreparable damage. Those youngsters think that the underdog superhero cartoon character and me are a couple of sex fiends, lustful cats. And that, and this isn't darn, and this isn't funny at all. Among more, uh, intimate acquaintances, I've been given the evil eye because of Howard's methods. Among the family, among my immediate family, I've become his disgrace. At work, 
I have been pummeled to death about it and my salary has been drastically reduced. Certainly my performing situation has not improved, it has gotten worse. Now where do we stand next? Certainly a program like this is totally unacceptable for if, if underdog, the cartoon TV superhero, family oriented, is to be showcased in the future with respect. What is to be done now, both in, in my case and generally, what I have told Howard before and what I am urging viewers, radio listeners, anyone who's opposed with message to tell him to do and what he must do, clean up your act! All right. We love you, underdog. This, underdog, thank you. Because this is an evil All right. program. All right, one thing more. Get rid of all the aforementioned media toxins. That's what they are, media toxins. They pollute the consumer's minds as surely as any perform any addictive drugs, considering they are far worse evils than any villainry committed by a fictional supervillain. Howard Stern and his deeds are real. On the dog. Do not, do not waste and abuse the future. You have polluted the past and you're still pleading the present. Thank you, Underdog. All right, Underdog, everyone. Thank you. Well, the Shrinky Awards are, the Shrinky Awards are, are filled with controversy, Robin. Earlier, the Sphincty Academy awarded the coveted Lifetime Cleavage Award to Robin Quivers for exposing her breasts for the good of the show. Would you look at this? Look at this fax machine. Is that beautiful? Do you love that? Look at all the faxes we're getting tonight on the Brother Fax Anti-Curl System fax machine. Look at this. Dear Howard, Mark Harris ain't such a bad guy. Signed, Dracula. <laughs> you believe that? Dear Howard, I look more like Babe Ruth than John Goodman. Signed, Roseanne. <laughs> I always thought Roseanne should get that part. And look at this fax. Perfectly flat. Dear Howard, screw the gag order. Donald is hung like a pimple. Signed, Ivana Trump. <laughs> All right, very good. We're very funny on this show. Now, you know, when a standard fax machine receives a fax, it comes out curled. Would you do me a favor and just writhe around during this commercial and point to the fax machine? It's getting very dull. All right, here we go. Now, until now, the only solution was to photocopy your faxes to try to uncurl them. But now, Brother offers the ACAS... Get that camera off the fax machine. I want to see the woman. What's the matter with you? Now Brother offers the ACS series. That's the anti-curl system. All your faxes come out perfectly flat. This is the one I use at home. The letters are crystal clear, not jagged like some fax machines. ACS, it's the only fax to buy. Available at Staples, J&R Music World, and nobody beats the whiz. Robin, best lesbian kiss is the next category, and it happens to be my favorite. You know that. I thought best topless appearance was your favorite category. Hey, I'm fickle, Robin, all right? All right, the nominees in this best lesbian category are... Rock and Roll Heather and Kate Boone for the second lesbian dating game. Come on, kiss for the, for the game. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Denise and Ronnie for lesbians on a ledge at the first house party. Lesbians in this house. How do they manage to keep doing that? Let me ask you something. Isn't it kind of boring being a lesbian after Aren't a while? Your arms or your lips tired? Felicia Gold and Angel Valentine for Star Trek and the Planet of Lesbos. Lady Alice, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Ginate and Keisha for nuzzling on the homeless Howie Wood Squares. You know, you, you hold each other and everything for a space for for women. It's, you know, just the initial kissing and hugging. Can you show us that? Uh, <laughs> yeah! yeah. <laughs> oh. Becky Reck and Michelle Martel for Lesbians from There to Eternity. Don't go. Kiss me. <laughs> oh. Yeah! Wrap your arms around her. Put your leg around her. That's it. And the sphincty goes to... Oh, I got you can't see. Should go to whatever Whichever couple... couple wants to come up here and kiss right now. Is that right? Which couple wants to come up here and kiss right now? 
I believe it's Becky Reck. Becky Reck won the award with Michelle. Come on up. Becky Reck and Michelle. Come on up. They're all coming up. Come on up, girls. Now, this is exciting. Now, let me ask you lesbians a question. Where are you going to put the Schwinkti when you get it home? I'm going to put it in my collection of, the, of dildos. <laughs> All right. Well, let me just say something. A lot of the lesbianism on our show was done by Becky Reck herself. And uh, all of you women are in love with Becky, aren't you? We love Becky. You love her? She's my friend. And you are the married woman who slept with Becky, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> and it was great, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, which one of you is going to speak up? Speak Becky, you want to make a speech? Here. Would you like to kiss the uh, girls, all of them? Now, Becky, I also understand, by the way, to make it more interesting, your girlfriend is also here tonight, is that right? Would you like to come up and take a bow, too? Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. What? What? All right, come on up. Now, um, this is the woman you live with, is that right, Becky? Yes, that's right. I see. Now, do you ever get jealous when you see Becky on the TV show kissing all these different girls? No, it's fine. It's fine with you? You don't care? No, right. Uh, you must get a little bit jealous. Come on. No, we're friends, and that's cool. I mean, her friends are my friends. She never gives you a hard time? No, no. Uh, uh, she does, doesn't she? Yeah, no, no, no. Well, we've never seen you actually kiss your girlfriend. Would you for us on the uh, award show? <laughs> wow. Isn't that great? Now, are uh, the rest of you women jealous? You don't get jealous when you see that? No. Do you get jealous? I want to kiss somebody. You want to kiss someone? Who would you like to kiss? Who? Hmm. Let me see. You'd like to kiss her? Would you mind? All right, go ahead. Come on, a five-way kiss. Five-way, five-way. Come on. Let's go, girls. All the girls. All the girls. That's it. Wow. Wow. By the way, all the girls in the audience, join in. Come on, girls. Come on, everybody. Girls, congratulations. Congratulations to all. Robin, the reason I've walked over here by the satellite is because we are about to present our next award. Live from Vancouver, we have Bon Jovi. To present our next award. And there they are, the great Bon Jovi. Aren't they great? Aren't they great? Hey guys, how you doing? It's happening. You know, I want to thank you to all. Thank you for coming to the award show. I can't believe it. Uh, it's so exciting to have a rock group of your caliber here. I wish we were actually there, listening in on uh, how that last award went. I think it's time now for you guys to present the Shrinkty Award. Please cool. do so. Here it is. All right, man. First of all, I want to say that we're real proud to be a part of this. I wish that uh, we had been able to present the preceding award, but thanks to this, we got the uh, Stuttering John Award. All right. So. Number one, the fluster to Melga Margos when John asked her about her bodily functions. Melda, if you pass gas at home in front of others, do you blame the family dog? <laughs> Ted Williams also for his unwillingness to talk about bodily functions. Uh, by any chance, did you ever accidentally uh, fart in the catcher's face? Pardon? Uh, by any chance, did you ever accidentally... Uh, in the catcher's face. Who the hell are you? For John's sake, that kind of <laughs> damn question. See you later. <laughs> and Joey Adams for his reluctance to talk about bodily functions in front of his Yanta wife. That when was the last time uh, Joey Adams. had a solid bowel movement? That's, that's very good. That's one of your better ones. <laughs> Look All right. like he did it on you. All right, guys, we can open. And, and the shanty goes to Imelda the Shoemakers. Imelda Marcos. Thank you, Bon Jovi. Good luck with your new album. We love you guys for coming on. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Adios, Accepting amigo. for Imelda Marcos is Jimmy Augustino. Accepting for Imelda Marcos is Jimmy Augustino.
I want to thanks everybody. Thanks, Howard. I'm going to accept this <laughs> award for partial payment from the amount of money that Marcos take from uh, our people, the Filipino. Congratulations. Congratulations. We're back at the Gala Television Celebration, the first annual Sphincty Awards. Now, humanitarian and entertainer, Howard Stern. Thank you, thank you. Robin, it's a long and exciting night. But we're coming to the end. I know we are. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a man who has sold out hundreds of concerts in the studio here tonight is the one and only Andrew Dice Clay. Woo. There he is. Andrew Dice Clay is appearing tonight as the character Max Cady from the movie Cape Fear to deliver a message of revenge to talk show host Arsenio Hall. Dice, it's a pleasure to have you here at the uh, well, ceremony. It's nice to be here, Howard. And I know that uh, you are about to make a statement. I have been attacked by a man. A man like myself, just flesh, blood, and bone. You know who I'm speaking to, Arsenio Hall. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Because, you know, I've been looking in for the last while, Arsenio, and every night, I don't know, maybe it's me, but I think they're making your makeup a little red. Or is that just your blood boiling from being called your boss, Eddie Murphy's, ass-licking, hypocritical pet for the last month or so? What gives you the right, you dirty, draw-wearing, ghetto-blasting, Big Daddy Kane dissing, Jesse Jackson ass-kissing, saliva-spraying, fault-laying, waitress-stiffing, window-ditting, roach-kicking, fried chicken, nose-picking, butt-sticking, Richard Pryor-mimicking, blind-dicking, Puerto Rican, Coke 45 drinking, skirt chasing, harness racing, Nike lacing, won't see a dentist slapping lip on hip, goat eating, tax cheating, collard green, afro sheen, won't allow people wheelchairs on the show, load dropping, diarrhea popping, eyeballs popping, floor mopping, honky stomping, future bus boy. Wow, wow, wow. Outrageous. Thank you for coming to the Schminkty Award. Stand by for Stand Up Comedy at Spotlight Cafe with sexy new host Rhonda Shear. Why spend Saturday night with anyone else? Spotlight Cafe is next on Channel 9.